The whole shoot was supposed to be very like flirty and romantic and we went to a pizza place and I just remember like he wanted me to like seductively eat the pizza and I mean we ended up the the, sh the shot that he took for it, it was like some insta shot but like it got a lot of attention on social media and everybody it was like oh my god this is so cute like uh and I'm like uh I'm like like it looks like I'm having fun but in my head I'm like this is the most uncomfortable thing ever I'm like dogging pizza down I loved it but <laughs> it was just weird in the sense that like the whole setup like the way he was staring at me he'd be shooting on a bed and he'd be like okay so I want you to crawl towards the camera like I'm your boyfriend and you're like begging for it and I was like and I straight up told him I was like <laughs> I was 16 I was like <laughs> oh no I was 17 Wait, same shit um I was like I've never actually had a boyfriend and yeah. I'm not uncomfortable talking about that like it's 2018 yes yeah. there's there's people like me out here <laughs> like there's nothing wrong with it so if you're in the same situation as me don't feel join shitty club, yeah sis. join the club we got matching and rings. so we have matching rings I'm wearing mine right now um <laughs> But yeah, like he was just very sexual. And then I, when we were at the pizza place, that's actually when I told him, I was like, yeah, I'm 17. And he had choked on his pizza. Cause he was literally like in his mid thirties. And it's crazy because we look at models and shit, I even look at models, I'm guilty. I'll look at a girl and I'll automatically assume that she's in her like mid twenties or just cause we look older, I guess. And, or because or because we're taught to think that I just feel like we're so surprised when we find out oh she's actually like 18 she's actually 16 I just caught him off guard with that and I don't know that's another thing that like frustrates me is when people think that we're older so they treat us like we're older in the way that like because of our physical appearance I don't know I feel grimy mm. how is it? yo <laughs> yo yeah it's good what's in it? cheese? yeah garlic it feels like I have a lip gloss on. No, <laughs> Yo, I'm so happy that I don't have a boyfriend. Oh, wait, scratch that out. <laughs> I'm so happy that I literally am not in a position right now to where I'm gonna kiss somebody because shit is strong. I love the smell of garlic. Live for it. Not, I feel like not on somebody, but I, I love the smell of garlic not on food. Somebody, yeah, we talked about this. We like I don't like the I don't like the texture of, of onions, but I hate the texture of onions. It freaks me they're just out. I feel like the, it's the crunchiness. Yeah, I hate when they're like um, sautéed. Mhm. Mm That's. I funny. feel like maybe one day I can switch up. Yeah. Yo, these boys though, this boy is hot. Does that show me double dipping? Cause I if it if it does, it's okay. Like. That's a double dip. Double dip is okay. I feel like if it's just your food, like I hate, I get really irritated when I'm with somebody and they're like, you're double dipping. If it's my food, yes. Um, if it's someone that I care about, I don't care. Yeah. But like, actually, you know what? I don't even care about double dipping as long as you're not like making you're not out with. If you're not, yeah, if you're not spitting in it, and if you're not like making out with Trump's dusty ass. I'm proud of you because honestly, I wouldn't think you even got to almost halfway. Really? Because you're such a slow eater. Oh my god! But you were talking, so you did. That's good. another thing that I feel really bad about. I've noticed that my friends are models when I do eat with them. My one friend that I found out on Finsta that she was like struggling and stuff. It's crazy because I remember I told you I was like I had no idea but then when you think about moments that you spend with somebody who is struggling and you really like this where the overanalyzing comes in you really overanalyze and nitpick like the situation to try to pick up things that maybe you could have thought that of. you yeah and so then you do start to pick up on little things that you notice that someone can has done but I feel like we just like look over them if I notice that someone's not eating I'm just assuming like oh it's cuz like they already ate or they don't feel good or they're just like, I don't know. But I never take into consideration 
some people don't if really some people, in front of if people. some people don't like exactly they have that fear and they have they're just not comfortable and they don't want to be judged and so they'd rather not say anything that's why i always remind myself like because you you see that i literally don't care about what i i mean i obviously yeah, like even my like on our yeah vendor, yeah so like good. I always try to keep in mind just like enjoy to enjoy myself because I know that like everybody has like those moments where they feel bad about themselves and you know they start to think very negatively I definitely have those time periods like especially when I was like first starting off I felt the pressure because I I was always comparing myself and I'd always um, just be like, well, well, shit, well, maybe if I looked like this, or maybe if I had her body type, or me, and, like, it, it was to the point where I was, like, I would just, like, save, like, girls, um, like, pictures of their body so I could be like, okay, this is what I want to look like, or, um, just watch really, like, hardcore videos on YouTube just trying to, like, make me, I don't know, I don't know if I was making myself feel bad on purpose. I went through a time period where I would just, like, pay attention to every little thing that I'd eat and like keep like do dumb stuff like keep a log on my phone I'm like dude what was wrong with me not saying that like like I'm not sitting here and making anybody feel bad if that's how they think but for me it's not a to think that way think. especially because I was only like 16 17 is is just like it just amazes me how we can just like let let other people get in our heads like that like people that we don't even know like random girls that i was just so jealous of like they made me feel that way and that's not and the th i'm not blaming them like they're you know they're doing their thing and i'm happy that for for everybody i just thought it was just so crazy how i was just i let myself be so vulnerable and on top of that i mean it when you do join the industry like you do feel very pressured to look a certain way and to follow certain trends not trends but like but certain things that come off is like what everyone's doing also i find that agencies they don't even realize the power they have over girls sometimes because it takes a simple comment like you need to lose weight or lose an inch or yeah. whatever it is to literally steer girls down the rabbit hole of body image issues or just like other girls to each other like oh my god i remember um i went to a casting for their show i've never done runway so i was like i'm so excited and yada yada and i remember I, I remember even when i walked in all the girls were extremely thin and for a moment i did feel really shitty even though i'm so like i know that i'm small but it's like when you look at other girls it's like that comparison hits in and you're like oh shit i don't look like that though and so anyways that's not the point i remember I was waiting to walk and this girl this she was australian she was talking to me and in front of us we had this big um this big uh what are, it's just like a big mirror mm -hmm. um propped against the wall and so i guess like the models can just look at themselves and fix themselves before they did their walk yeah. and the girl she was like extremely thin she was like i'm not gonna do her accent because <laughs> i feel like i would embarrass myself but she was like this mirror makes you look so oh my god like it, look, it makes you look so thin is what she said i was just kind of sitting there like okay i'm not talking to this girl because um, i'm not feeding into that yeah. and um it's just like it's scary when you hear things like that it's so toxic yeah literally we're taught to shrink that is so bizarre if you think about it we have one life on this planet and women are taught to be smaller and it's honestly i don't i don't want to like blame it on like gender roles but a lot of stigma around women is like she talks too much or she's too loud or too opinionated or too big and the reason why people are like that is because we're in this shrinking culture there are times where i get really frustrated when people just assume my modeling journey just came about in like one night that's not how it worked at all before the w mag article had been released it had already been written months ago so it came out i don't i could be wrong i think it came out around like october november and i had you know i had had it sitting there in my email around like let's just say june and so that alone shows that there is no overnight success here and even then like people like flip stuff all the time my words have been flipped so many times to make it look like i'm i don't know the, the one thing that really frustrates me is when people compare me to like frida i mean it is, it's a compliment because she was a badass woman was it that you dressed up as her for, for no, literally, literally was that not even, it was that, just when i dressed up as her that was way after all of this had even happened i just thought it was i thought it'd be fun to dress yeah. up as her but everyone just made that comparison i think just because she was mexican and i'm puerto rican and so you just find a, 
uh, a girl with thick brows and you just automatically compare her to like one person that type right. of thing that like that year was really bad for me the whole eyebrow thing really took a toll on me like how I felt about myself which is crazy because everybody it's like these these articles being written about me these brands were like praising them but the response from it like wasn't good like for a year straight I was getting so much hate like I told you that one day that I woke up and I started crying because the first notification that I look at someone's literally like a man literally tells me he's like I hope you get and like over some body hair like if that like like not even to bring it to that though I will say that body hair I'm not like a I'm not like an activist for body hair like I don't promote like oh my god do this and that. I mean yeah do whatever you want like yeah if you want to like have a unibrow have underarm hair leg hair like go for it I don't think that that's like to me of all the conversations that we can have I don't think that's the most important that's another thing that frustrates me I don't want to get tied into that scene because I feel like there's greater things that we can talk about when I started getting so much attention on social media I was just kind of like what the fuck is this all about like I'm just trying to like live I'm not I'm not asking anybody to send me hate I wasn't asking anybody to give me attention to because I didn't feel like I had anything to say which kind of sucks because I feel now I feel pressured to like be perfect but with that being said though I'm really grateful that I do have my platform because once I start using it the way that I want to use it which is definitely in a more influential way like I'll feel much happier right and it's like giving you the ability to yeah I have like doing this is the perfect example like I want to be able to just relate more to an audience um in a healthy way that's not artificial because yeah. i feel like a lot of day a lot of people these days just do things for the wrong reasons i feel like a lot of people just really had a problem with me because i wasn't traditional in the sense of like i don't look like cara delavine because when cara delavine first came out on social media everyone was like her eyebrows her eyebrows we love her but you know like she's blonde with blue eyes i'm not blonde with blue eyes and I guess people just didn't like that. And, and on top of that, I guess because I wasn't so traditional, like people thought I was ugly. I've always felt that I looked a little bit more androgynous and masculine because my features are so dark and so, I don't know, like I just feel like when I see myself in the mirror, I see my dad. And that's, that's not a bad me. thing. I used that's to think me. it was a bad thing looking a little masculine, whatever that is. But I feel like that's why a lot of people had problems with me first coming into all of this because they just didn't see me as like a traditional, pretty little dainty girl. Um, as if there's one specific way to look as a woman, which really frustrates me. When I first started social media, I felt like I needed, I like owed I owed it to everybody to be, to just like, please, to just please everybody. So now I'm just kind of like, I go on when I want, I post when I want, thinking about other people's opinions and just like comparison, comparison was a big thing. And people think that we're a genre of humans that don't experience human emotions. So the way that everyone compares themselves to like our people, like our friend, our people. <laughs> friends, you know, like the way our friends are compared to by other people, mm -hmm. they don't think models compare themselves to other models. I literally feel like models are the most insecure people I've ever met. It's crazy because I literally am surrounded by the most beautiful people all the time, like my friends especially. I'll say something like, like fuck, I was thinking about how jealous I am of you for this, and they're like, well bitch, I was thinking the same thing, but, but with this. From an outsider's perspective, you never think that someone so beautiful could feel so shitty about themselves. We all want something that somebody else has. I'm never gonna have light eyes, so I should might as well just learn how to deal with having my little chocolatey eyes. And, so, and you know, something that I've been doing lately is like, I love chocolate, so like if I ever feel like my eyes are like ugly, I'm just kinda like, well I love chocolate, so I, I must love my eyes. Cause they remind me of like a Hershey bar <laughs> or something I stupid like that. that. Just, just coming up with small things to like make you feel better. Cause I feel like, I don't know, you can, you can dislike something about yourself, but as long as you're able to appreciate it in some way, I feel like that's, a, that's okay. Like, um, like I have crooked pinkies <laughs> because when no, I was, no, I do. So when I was, I'm going to tell the story about that. So when I was in elementary school, I was really shy and I did not speak to anybody. And I had I had a really bad habit. I would I would crack them like this. I would like pull them in. And so I stopped doing that obviously, but now I have crooked pinkies and Wait, I really can I see it? They're so ugly. Basically I just like cause I would crack them. Bro, I literally You don't see it? 
they're busted basically but it's okay because like even cause, realize cause, well because like i i just i think about it too much but and the thing is it's like i hate them but i'm just kind of like whatever so maybe you know like wearing rings makes me feel a little like nicer about having <laughs> jacked fingers but Stop. but like it's just something i don't know it's just like finding ways to like appreciate yourself yeah. like when someone asks me like oh what's your favorite feature about myself i'll just usually be like little freckles on my nose i see it's like i've always loved i love big noses like the more culture i see on you the better <laughs> and so like this bumps on noses are just so beautiful and so now i love mine even though mine isn't as big as like somebody else's um but like yeah like using my freckles was a good excuse for me to like kind of like step into of an, more of an appreciation for that i guess i don't even know if i explained that right the more um Latina I look the happier I feel because I remember when I was little and I was having identity problems I just wanted to look like your all-american girl back then if someone asked me like what are what are you like I'm a like I'm a snake or something <laughs> what are you I would be so ashamed to be like oh I'm Puerto Rican and then but nowadays I'm like yeah I'm like this is where I'm from like do you want to visit you know <laughs> And so I'm happy that I'm at that place because when I had those identity problems, I struggled. And the thing is, is that I had literally from the moment that I moved to the United States, I, I just hated the way that I looked. And I can just remember being in like first grade and because that's as far as like my mind can go right now. I just remember being in first grade and just seeing other girls in class or even boys. And I'd be like, oh, well, shit, they have that. And I and I don't. So like. I just don't like myself in and or just even being in school like I always noticed that like the the girls that everyone liked had like lighter more Eurocentric features and so I always felt like oh well if boys don't like me it's because I'm ugly oh my god I remember middle school I remember I was on some I was on some like toxic shit I was like yeah when I when I get married and have kids like I hope it's with someone that has lighter features so that my kid turns out more like what I want to look like like I was thinking shit like that like I don't even want my own future children to look like me like I, that was just crazy how I had that mindset and so nowadays with like the whole because the thing is I like as I've gotten older I've just like grown uh, a bigger appreciation of where I come from and it just makes me so happy because I know lots of people that are just like me and they let identity problems get the best of them and they still feel um, insecure with themselves. Because this is models that eat, I do want to say like if you are a model or even if you're not a model and you feel like you can't, let's just say like you, like let's just say you want to eat this pizza, eat that pizza, okay? It's all about just enjoying yourself and just being happy and content with yourself, like don't don't be like me when I was in elementary school having identity problems and don't be like me when I was in middle school or high school having <laughs> having having other crises just do what makes you happy and even if you are in a little bit of a funk or if you're struggling with something don't feel like it's the end of it and that you cannot um, progress from that because you're not the only one optimism optimism yeah. manifestation yeah. like yeah just do the things that make you happy and slowly but surely you'll see the differences in everything whether it be with yourself or your environment like just yeah you'll just, enjoy yeah yourself you'll enjoy yourself just enjoy yourself is what i want to say that's my be advice yourself, love be yourself love yourself cheers bitch cheers yes. to your cup of what, what is um, this <laughs> Uh, I don't even know. It's good though. It's good though. Yeah. Clink, clink. We got that good. Some good. garlic knots. Yes. Big mood. Eat some garlic knots. <laughs> I have food in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only.